All right, so hi everyone, my name is Vera and welcome to a Stitching Corner. Um, yeah, today is May the 31st, which means it's time to wrap up all the stitching that happened this month. So I'm really excited, as always. Well, why am I not excited? <laughs> um, so because I have lots of things to share with you, lots of things to show you, some new stitching patterns, uh, a new start, um, some things you haven't seen before. Uh, and lots of framing. So I went on a framing framing roll this month because I had a present to frame, then I got another frame and I framed one of my personal pieces. And then I went and I wanted to try uh, IKEA frames because they have like those basic white. I think they have like a flat and then a bit of a mod modeling one. Ah, okay, you'll see it all. Um, some in pictures because I don't have them anymore. Um, but yeah, so let's start. Um, so just to kind of like uh, what to expect. I like to have like this kind of like what to expect because otherwise I'm just gonna go and open up a whole bunch of Pandora boxes. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all of my finished, finished objects, so FFOs. Then we're gonna be talking about finishes. Then I'm going to show you the new starts, uh, works in progress, um, any new patterns that I got over the month. Um, and then a couple of shout outs uh, slash things that I've watched in terms of floss tube and thought that you might find interesting as well. Now, keep in mind, I will talk about some floss tubers along the way because some of them have influenced particular choices or were insightful in some way or another uh, about current particular projects that I've worked on. Um, so if you're kind of like skipping to the back and then you don't see yourself in case you got notified that I tagged you because I always like to tag, um, don't worry, you're there. <laughs> it's just because you were involved or that floss tuber was involved in particular decisions that I've made about works in progress or finishes. So let's start about the first thing, um, which is how many stitches did I do this month? Um, so what I can tell you is I have 14,772 stitches stitched in May. Now, that's a lot. It's less than what I usually do, which is around the 15,000. But um, I stitch a lot on the Alice in Wonderland uh, stitch along from uh, Owl Forest Embroidery, and that one does not, I don't count how many stitches there are. So it's more than 14,000 um, for the month, but I don't know how much more. And I'll know it, I know how much more at the end when I finish that project that I divide. Anyhow, it's a whole entire story, but I think this is a pretty great month, everything considered. So I have three FFOs, so three fully, fully, fully finished objects. Um, I have three finishes, out of which one, uh, one is a SAF. So thank you for, I don't know who reminded me of this last video, but I was kind of like, how do you call something that you start and finish? Well, it's a SAF, duh, of course. <laughs> so I have one of this. Um, I have one new start, and all in all, there are six works in progress um, to share with you today. So the first thing that I finished uh, is I framed the uh, rabbit. So here it is right here, because I don't have, don't have it anymore with me. Um, this was part of the, um, it was a trio in a magazine, um, The World of Cross Stitching. I don't remember which one. I, I mentioned it in one of my other videos, but that's where the Highlander uh, cow is from. So it was a little bird, uh, the rabbit, and the Highlander cow. I stitched all three of them roughly within the same month. Um, I really liked it and I kind of like chose different fabrics for them. Um, but I finally got to frame this and I framed it without the glass. So the story for this framing was actually quite, quite interesting. I, um, I was really curious about the IKEA frames and um, the quality, how they look, whether they're even suitable for, you know, cross stitch that you've spent so much time on. Um, does it make sense to get an Ikea frame? Uh, what the size is, what do they have in terms of styles? Um, so one thing I can tell you, they don't have glass frames anymore. It's like this kind of like plexiglass, uh, which is just plastic that is covered with like a, a nylon thing and that you peel off, but it's very static. Um, so I've known that. Uh, but I was planning on just framing it without the glass anyways because I've seen how it looks um, for other people without the glass. It just looks so much more like 
luscious and volumetric in terms of like the stitches and they're more intricate. So I picked up one of those white with a little bit of modeling frame so I didn't get the just the flat um, like the the flat frame but just it has a little bit of modeling to it and I was looking at everything that I already have um, and I thought what fits inside this frame <laughs> so it came with a little bit of a museum board just kind of like uh, just around it um, and I look at all of my other small finishes and the rabbit just fitted the best so I'm like, all right, rabbit, in you go. Um, the story of the rabbit is that was back in the day when I still gritted with a pencil. Um, and for this this one, I was so committed <laughs> to, to make the grid. <laughs> the, I washed it maybe four times, soaked it for hours. I tried all sorts of different things. Um, and then when I was framing it with my mom, she said, just leave the grid. It, it's part of the aesthetic. And I thought like, yeah, that is part of the aesthetic. So the grid is staying on. Um, and uh, because I'm having a little bit of redecorating in our house, um, we're doing a whole bunch of changes. I just don't have where to put it. Like I literally do not have any surfaces and you can see how many plants I have. So every surface is taken up by a plant. Uh, it's a full on jungle in here. Um, so anyhow, I left it at her place and I said, you guys enjoy the rabbit for now. Um, so that's the first fully finished object. Then I also finished the Greyhound. So here it is. Um, this was a finish from February, I believe. And this is by um, Stephanie Seabrook. It is, I'm just having my notes in here so I can share with you some details, um, kind of like basic details, I guess. Um, so I finished it in February, like I said, and it's by Pegasus Originals. I think that's the, the name of the uh, publisher. Uh, this is called Italian Greyhound in gray and white. I think there's another one in brown and white. I'm not sure if that's what it's called. So here's the glare. I hope that I'm able to, to do it like that. If there's too much glare, I'll just do a picture and uh, overlay it on top of this uh, frame, um, just so you don't, <laughs> just so you don't sit through the glare. Um, and I stitched it on a 32, count Lugana, which is a 16 count equivalent um, in light blue. So um, I think, yeah, I think this light blue works really well for it. Then another finish that I have is something that you have never seen because I kept on calling it the, the secret project. <laughs> and I can finally share it with you because first of all, I finished it, but secondly, because it's gifted now. So it's no longer gonna ruin the surprise. And that is, I'm gonna add the picture right here. Um, it is called Home to Roost. It is by Lucy Heaton. So the same designer who designed the Highlander cow uh, with the rabbit. Um, and I think she does lots of interesting other things. So excellent work, uh, excellent design, I have to say. I really, really liked those chicks. Um, when I saw it, uh, I thought it has to be stitched in my lifetime. Um, and then when I, fathom the idea of this is going to be a gift for someone uh, and for a particular person that just made it perfect sense. I started, it took me a little bit of a while to finish it, um, but I finished it. So some details about this one. Um, it is from the Cross Stitcher magazine from October, 2020. Now I believe you can get this on her Etsy, Etsy page. So if you don't want to get the magazine or you don't have access to the magazine or you can't find the magazine, um, that is a standalone uh, pattern that can be purchased on Etsy. I started this in uh, March the 14th and I finished it on May the 1st. So it just made it into this month. Um, I spent six, uh, not 16, 18 stitching days on this. Um, and there are about 6,200 stitches in total. Um, so that's one of those <laughs> projects that I like manually uh, counted how many stitches I stitch every single time and then just like added it all up. Um, I'm using the fabric that I'm using for this is 28 count uh, mushroom Lugana. Um, I don't think it's called for, it calls for such a warm brown. I think it calls for a little bit of a cooler brown, but that's what I had and I think that works great. Uh, the, the floss is DMC of course, and that frame is from Michaels and it does have a real glass thing to it. Um, why do I put the glass for gifts? I think it just makes more sense, right? Like you want to finish it in a way that people 
comprehend. <laughs> frame goes with a glass and you know you never know what's gonna happen in their house and you want to keep it clean for them um, so they have less less hustle um, with with the uh, with the caring for the for the for the piece um, so yeah I it's over so I hope that sometimes in the future I will uh, publish a video where I kind of like go over through this process because I was taking like shots uh, along the way and some are longer than others and I did a little bit of stitch with me with that and just chatting and talking about materials um so I think it's gonna be super interesting so let me know um how urgent you want it to come out but I do have the footage <laughs> um and I'm more than happy to share this with you okay so moving on so those were fully finished objects one two three Wow, three frames per month. I'm not sure, am I, is that normal for like to frame things right away? <laughs> I try not to hold on to it for too long because then it's gonna be a pile and I do want my stitching to be out there in the world. <laughs> Even if it's in the form of gifting it, which is, uh, it's kind of difficult to gift things to people, right? Because you spend so much time on it and you, yeah. But it's really like it makes me happy to know that it's in good hands and people appreciate it and it's like you know within the family or good friends and anyhow it's a special thing to do for people all right so the next thing that i finished uh it is the the moons so it is done the moons are over here i hope that that's how it is I'm going to try to hold on to it as steadily as i can because I was looking at my previous videos and I realized that I pull things in and out so quickly <laughs> and I don't let them kind of like sit and for you to watch uh, and see it. I hope I never made anyone like motion, motion sickness. Um, I'm sorry if I did. I, the excitement takes the better part of me. <laughs> so how can I keep this on? What if I like this? All right. So, I'm covered up in moons. This is from, um, okay, so let's start it this way. It's by Emma Condon. Uh, again, this is one of those patterns that you can actually purchase on Etsy uh, if you don't have the magazine. But I got this from the Cross Stitcher magazine uh, from March 2021. Um, I started this on April the 3rd and I finished it on May the 24th. So just a little bit over a month. Um, so for the month of May, I've spent seven days on this and I've put uh, 3,600 stitches. Now, in total, it took me about 12 days, um, and the whole entire pattern is uh, 4,864 uh, stitches. Um, I stitched this on a 14 count Ada. Uh, this is color navy, and the floss is DMC, of course. But this is kind of like the stages of the moon throughout the month. Now, I had a little bit of a miscalculation with this one. So I had this strip of fabric and I thought this is, fabric is gonna be perfect for the moons. I'm just gonna fit them. And I only calculated the top and the bottom of the moons to make sure that they fit vertically, but I didn't calculate how much space they would require horizontally. So initially I wanted to have that empty moon also starting at the beginning, um, but then I stitched a moon and a half and, and I thought I should probably check that it actually fits. I was so confident it was gonna fit because it was such a long uh, piece of fabric. And then I measured it and it just doesn't fit. So I had to make in between each moon just three stitches, uh, uh, three stitches of buffer. I wanted a bit more because that would have given it a little bit of a breathing room. And then I was not able to include that beginning or the last one. So um, it's a little bit asymmetrical, but I hope you forgive me for that. <laughs> um, still, not the, nevertheless, it looks it looks beautiful. It does use um, those um, um, new uh, DMC flosses, like the 010203. So all of those grays, those are not um, from their old releases. Like those are the new releases. I'm not sure how many years ago, 2017 or so. Um, so. That was interesting. Um, I was trying to find them and the Michaels that I had had a little bit of a uh, trouble with this with stocking those um, those newer 
one side had to go multiple times back and forth to sorry to get all the grace but now it's done so this is the first or the most recent finish for the month and then um, something you haven't seen either is uh, this one which is a Christmas piece so this one is called Ho 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 and it's a freebie from Pineberry Lane um, I started this on May the 15th and finished the same day so this was one of my um, saffs a day saff <laughs> um, so I really like um, just doing small pieces during the month like having all those full coverages and things that like take multiple months to complete. Um, having a guaranteed finish, oh, it brings like such a nice, such a nice satisfactory feeling. So here it is uh, up close. So it's a uh, old style Santa. I'm not sure why it's 1887. So maybe it was from a sampler from 80, 1887 or um, inspired by 1887, but that's what it is. I couldn't find any information about that. So if anyone knows, let me know. Uh, <laughs> where, where does the 1887 come from? Because if this is actually from 1887, that would be really cool. <laughs> um, it's very simple. It has a DMC, DMC floss to it. Um, very quick stitch. Um, it is only 627 stitches, so it's real fast. Um, I did this on a 14 count Ada, um, and this is the pewter, pewter color. So last month, if you remember, I did the um, uh, Canadian Goose it's stitched on the same color. So it's kind of like that blue, but dusty, um, kind of like low key, um, not bright color. So I thought that would be great for that. Um, again, the floss is DMC. Now she has um, instructions of how to make it aged. I didn't go for it. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I don't want to mess things up because I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not experimental yet. So, and here is one of the first opportunities that I want to make a note of a floss tuber that, um, <laughs> that what? That also talks about smalls and <laughs> the awesome, the awesome feeling of having small things that kind of like give you um, energy to continue moving on and just like that little bit of satisfaction. So, um, covered in floss, she's been all over the place. Um, excellent channel lots of interesting things uh totally shouted me out a couple of times and i think i only saw the first one then i went over and i saw that there was another one so thank you so much um very excited i'm very thrilled and honored to <laughs> to inspire uh to inspire um others to do all sorts of different things but um in her most recent one i think it was the fourth one uh she was mentioning how having like smalls is such a such a delight <laughs> and I'm like I'm totally on board with that because yeah like this this little piece that that one little piece that I do per month I know it takes a day I know I could have done something else I know I could have spent those 600 stitches on something else but I have a finish um and that just kind of like gives me that boost of like oh yeah okay refresh something new something uh a different pattern different style different colors different fabric I get to experiment a little bit and then I kind of like get it out of my system and I'm feeling re-energized to work my full coverages afterwards. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for mentioning that as well. And I, I was like, yes, I'm not the only one who feels that way. Um, and it's nice to have like people echo, echo what you also feel and what you also kind of like find truth in. And it's like really encouraging, really, uh, yeah, it's a good feeling. <laughs> so um, that is my SAF. Now, I think this is it for finishes. So that was quite a bit. Um, let's move on to some new starts. So in one of my Stitch With Me's, I mentioned that I started something on a 40 count and it's a sampler. I think I said it's a sampler, um, but I haven't mentioned what it is. And that is this one. So this is called The Country Life by Blackboard Designs. It is designed by, let me just, uh, Barb Adams. So I think Blackbird Designs is a duo and this one was uh, charted by Barb Adams. Um, let me just see if I can find, there's a story to it. Okay, so welcome to Barb's Country Manor with its yard full of elect, elect eclectic animals <laughs> I'm to say electric animals like wait no no there's no electric animals at all uh this sampler celebrates her mother 
Liana, uh, who moved back to the family farm in 1944 uh, when she was 20 years old. Um, yeah, so Barb celebrates her mother's home, the joys of the delightfully knit family and country life with, it, with this piece. So yeah, there you go. There's lots of different uh, like wildlife animals, like a rooster and a fox and a rabbit and a crone. Is that what it is? So I'm really excited about this one. I've been itching and itching is an understatement uh, to do a sampler. I have been, I've never done a sampler. I've never done anything on a 20 count or a 40 count. Um, and every time I saw a sampler with a house, I just felt like I want to start it. I want to start it. I want to start it. But one of the things that I find challenging with the samplers is the uh, repetitive border or the idea of the repetitive border and the alphabet, like multiple alphabets and multiple borders. Um, for me, that's kind of like, I don't know if I could <laughs> withstand that <laughs> in terms of patience and the repetitive work. Um, so I was looking for something that has, first of all, it is a recreation or re reproduction of a sampler, so it's not like completely just made up. Um, and the second thing that I was looking for is a minimal amount of border and a minimal amount of uh, alphabets and letters. And I think this just fits it perfectly. There's a little bit of a house, um, quite a bit of grassy area with all those animals, and the border is just just a little bit here. Now, it does have eyelets in it, so if you can come closer, you can see that the flowers are made out of eyelets. Um, I'm not going to be doing the eyelets, I'm going to be doing it as uh, just crosses, like just regular stitches. Um, yeah, I think that's appropriate. <laughs> I'm doing a cross stitch. I don't, yeah. I think eyelet is more for embroidery, in my head, at least that's my rationale right now. Um, so uh, I'm just going to be doing cross stitches. So let me show you uh, what I have done so far. So uh, in terms of fabric, uh, this is a 40 count linen uh, by Zweigart. It is color flax, okay? And I've never worked in a 40 count linen. Uh, I've work, I work on a 36 count linen for the uh, Alice in Wonderland. Um, but this is something that I was not expecting. So the weave is dense. There's not that much between, between the threads of the fabric, um, which I don't mind. But when I started working, I was just like, wow, this is like, you know, like what you would expect to see in a store, like a fabric, like a linen fabric. Um, so that's interesting. Now I'm doing this one thread over two. So one thread over two holes. Um, and that kind of like gives me this type of coverage. I'm really happy with that. It looks very delicate. Um, yeah, that one thread, I would just pick one thread and just stitch and stitch and stitch and it doesn't run out. It's like, wow, I don't know how many stitches I've made and it's already, already that many. Um, so let's see, I'm going to keep this one up. So we have something to look at. Um, I've spent three days on this. It is 809 stitches so far. Um, I don't know how many stitches are there in total. Um, I did take a picture of this and imported this into uh, Pattern Keeper, but with the Pattern Keeper, it actually, let me show you, it actually calculates all the gap area as well as stitches. Um, so I think it says 13,000. Yeah, I think it says 30,000, but it's not gonna be 13,000 because this whole entire top area, um, it's very sparse. I mean, this is full coverage here, but this is very sparse. Um, so I don't know how many stitches there are actually in there. What was the 10,000 stitches? I don't remember. Sorry, I should have written that down. Um, but that is my sampler. That is my sampler. So here's another floss tube mention. Um, the needle bug. Karen, Karen the needle bug. I was so not confused but kind of like intrigued how do i start one thread on linen and make it like delicate and, and okay and so i was looking at um how to start and end threads on linens um, and i think she has a video not necessarily for linens but it's like how to um, use the loop method for one thread um, and so I totally used that. <laughs> so I watched the video and I was like, no, oh, that works for me. Um, so thank you, Karen, for sharing that. I really appreciate it. And I think if I wasn't, if I wouldn't have seen that video, I probably would have just like made a messy start, um, which would have worked, but 
it's always nicer to have someone kind of like guide you through <laughs> through uncertainties so yeah if anyone is interested in stitching with one thread for full coverages or regular regular stuff um just type just search it <laughs> i'm sure you'll find uh you'll come across it okay so the country life country life I don't have a country life. I have a city life. <laughs> so I think there's like a little bit of a charm charm to um, to work on that. Um, so that was my one and only start. I feel accomplished and proud of myself for having such excellent <laughs> self-control um, because I was, I, I wanted to start more things than just that. Um, so whew, I have a hair stuck in my earring. I just took my shower, so my hair is like, wet and heavy and when it gets stuck to something it's like i have to like work it out all right um let's move on to some of the works in progress so just before i start showing you the works in progress um this is a smaller number of works in progress did i say six one two three four five i lied it's only five sorry i don't lie i accidentally miscounted <laughs> i've misled you um i did not stitch on everything i did not stitch multiple things a day like i did the previous month um yeah i was taking it much more calmly this time uh, no sporadic stitching i've made not a concrete plan but like a guideline that i can kind of like use um and tweak along as as the as the month goes by and you know different days kind of like sometimes bring different things um but i just wanted to have like this um chunk of stuff accomplished in each one of those pieces uh i didn't want to have like a thousand stitches or 1200 stitches um and then call it a day um i just wanted to have like real progress uh, visible progress so i've just focused on a couple of things um, and that's been my my aim over the last month. So the um, the way that I usually do things is I usually um, uh, show them to you with their chronological order uh, when the newest or the most recent one is the first thing and then I just go down the order and my oldest whip um, is gonna be at the end. So yeah, I think you've, you've seen that before. Um, so the first project I have is, where is it? It's called Fields of Gold by Maria Diaz. Um, so here's what it's supposed to look like. Um, then here is what it was like last month. Um, and here is what it is today. Yeah, I hope everything fits into the frame. Now, now you have my face and, and <laughs> the piece. Um, I actually liked having something in the background, so I'm just going to use <laughs> the country life as a, as a backdrop. Um, so here's the Fields of Gold. Um, it is from the Cross Stitcher magazine from July 2020. Now I started this on April the 15th and I've done two days of stitching over this month. Um, and I, I don't know how, but I did 2,200 and 16 stitches in those two days. Now, I think it's mainly because I was stitching the upper area where the uh, it's tent stitches, like it's half stitches, so those flew by real fast. Um, and there's a limited number of sky color in here. Like, you know, there's the white, which actually wasn't supposed to be white, but I added it in, and I'm really, really happy that I did. Um, it looks much more like fuller instead of having the, the Ada in the background. Uh, but there's like the white light blue darker blue and dark dark blue so it, it really was not complicated it flew by real fast um, so i was able to do quite a bit um, like i said there are half stitches and full stitches in here so hopefully you can see it right here um, and that does kind of like provide it a bit of dimension when you look from the back because the angle of half the half stitch is the opposite as the full stitch because i did the first leg of the stitch for the half stitches but with the full stitches it goes the other way around um and so it has like a little bit of that dancing dynamic movement to it that i think i think looks good <laughs> um so in total i've stitched on this for seven days and it's 3658 stitches um this is 16 count ada 
no, I'm, I'm not, I'm looking at something else. Sorry, <laughs> I was looking at a different project and giving you numbers from a different project. Um, no, so I've stitched on this in total for seven days and 38, 64 stitches out of 10,800. Um, I'm using a 16 count Ada, which is the vintage, no, not vintage white, antique white. Um, and that's a leftover from the park full coverage project that I started. Uh, the floss is DMC, everything is kind of like regular, um, but that's, that's kind of it. So it's going to be like a small, smaller full coverage. Um, hopefully I can finish it with that within the next two months. Um, we'll see, no wishes granted or no wishes. I'm not setting up a wish. Sorry, words. <laughs> oh, thank you for being here. <laughs> I hope you're entertained. I hope you are. <laughs> I hope this brings you joy. Um, and then the next, uh, the next project that I worked on or that I have been working on in terms of chronological order, and for this one, I definitely do not need the paper thing, uh, is the full coverage uh, vintage garden, vintage summer garden bookshelf <laughs> uh, by Amy Stewart. So I'm going to put this right here for now. I hope you can see it. So this is what it's supposed to look like. Uh, this is what it was before, and this is what it is now. So not too much of a progress, but um, actually quite here, plenty of progress. So I've stitched um, four days on it. Um, and I did 28, 34, uh, 100 stitches. In total, I've spent 15 days, um, and I have so far 9,189 stitches out of 350,000 stitches, which is about 2.6% complete. Um, I'm stitching this on a 25 easy count Bugana, um, and then it's a DMC floss. So this is artwork by Amy Stewart, but um, the pattern is charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, so yeah, this is my spring start. I started this on April the 11th. So that's been really fun. I'm doing this 10 stitch two over one. It moves so fast. If you can stomach <laughs> uh, the diagonal, cause like it, do it does take your brain to like train to it basically. Uh, but if you can, if you can try something smaller, maybe give it a try because it's so much faster. Like I'm, I almost want to say it's double the speed um, than doing full crosses. Um, and that really gives you that motivation and encouragement to continue working on it. Like it's so hard for me to put this down because it's like, I see so much progress being done. I want to keep on doing it because I want to see more. But there's also other things that I want to more work and see complete. So I have to kind of like, oh, next time I'll work again on the vintage summer garden bookshelf. <laughs> It's a mouthful of a name, mouthful of a name, to say. Um, so the next project that I'm working on is called um, The Stitch Along of Alice in Wonderland. Um, this was, uh, again, a freebie pattern that came out a couple of years by Owl Forest Embroidery. Um, and they were sort of like publishing small chunks of the Stitch Along where now it's available as a whole, but the PDF that they share is still like made with those chunks. So you're not seeing the whole entire pattern together. Uh, so this is what it's going to be look like when it is complete um, and this is what it looks like last month and here is what we have today. Yeah, look at that. Let me just move out so maybe you can see the whole entire thing. Um, that's the That was my focus piece for the month. That was my focus piece for the month. I have spent nine days on this, more than I've spent on any of the other projects. I took it everywhere with me. We went and visited some family. I took this uh, to that trip. Um, I've stitched on it a lot um, because I want to I want to put big progress on it. Um, so, in terms of, I restarted it. I have to say it like that. So I restarted it on February the twenty third. Um, I've spent so far twenty seven days of stitching on this, and. It is on a 36 count linen, uh, Edinburgh linen, um, by Zweigart again, and the color is winter, winter moon. So it's a bit creamy, but not yellow creamy, a bit more neutral creamy. 
Um, there are about 23,000 stitches in here, so it's, it's a big one. I don't know how many stitches I've stitched on this. I know I did at least a quarter because the Queen of Hearts, she's somewhere in the middle. And so I have a little bit above and below and to the side of her. So definitely a quarter um, this month. It's big. <laughs> so 36 count is equivalent to 18. So this is tiny. This is teeny bitty. Um, and I've done this whole entire bottom area. The lady with the pancakes and the pot. Um, and this, and then the cat, and all of this border, and yeah, it is, I'd, I'll tell you what, I was very excited to start working on it, and then the 23,000 stitches just dawned on me, because I was all of a sudden doing all those other things, and I felt like, oh, 23,000, if I stitch 15,000 a month, that means I'll have to spend about two months solely stitching on this and that made me a little bit sad and kind of like put me off from stitching on it which is kind of like the contrary that I should be doing um, and so I was not really motivated to stitch on it the last two months uh, but this month for some reason I felt like okay no I can't I can't think about timelines and predicting and you know kind of like doing all this calculated math just you just stitch forget about the math forget about when it's going to be done and how long it's gonna take just st just stitch on it um, and then I like really <laughs> um, took off the load of my shoulders and I was just able to okay let's let's just stitch let's stitch a lot on it what, what's the problem with stitching a lot on it I, I, I can't do that um, I'm not gonna be concerned about when I'm gonna be finished with this um, or that it's taking away from other stuff because I'm still gonna be doing other stuff and so yeah like I have a bit of a uh, renewed relationship with this piece and I'm really happy about that um, so I think I'm gonna put this away for the next month just because I've worked so much on this um, during the last month and too much of a good thing can be too much right does anyone agree with me <laughs> so it looks gorgeous like it really fills in and there's lots of things you can lay your eyes on it you know, just like marvel at um, and the stitches lie down so nicely on the 36 Edinburgh. It's a much looser weave than the 40 count. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I, this is my hypothesis, is that it's the same, uh, excuse me, it's the same thread that was used to create both of those fabrics. But because the 40 count, you have to squeeze more, then it's more packed. I think, I think that's what makes this an open, a looser weave uh, as opposed to the other one. Um, so that is the Alice in Wonderland by Owl Forest Embroidery. Okay, so I have two more things left. Both are big behemoths. And the first one is the Sanctuary of Knowledge. Ta -da -da -da. Uh, this is by Randall Spangler, uh, also charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. This is what it's supposed to look like. Um, this is where I was last month. And here it is what it looks like for this month so I am finally down to the bookshelves <laughs> I'm finally down to the library so let's do this again like we did last time because this one I can use as a blanket um, I think in one of my videos I showed how it is literally a blanket unfolded on my bed um, so century of knowledge uh, started January the 29th uh, I stitched four days on this uh, in the month of May and I did 1,423 stitches. Now as a total, just to give you an idea, it is 34 days that I've stitched so far and you have um, 13,462 stitches here out of 748, which is 1.8%. Uh, so this is super size, max color, full shebang, three quarters of a million of stitches. Um, yeah. At first I was aiming for 10 years, now I'm aiming for 13, 14, 15 years. <laughs> maybe maybe I'm not aiming at all. It, it, yeah, this is my, how much, how much out of my life? I hope I'm gonna have another one, max color in my life, or max super size in my life. So I'm not gonna call this my life, my lifelong stitch 
I hope there's gonna be more than that. <laughs> but this is basically what it is right now. I'm finally getting to see um, like the lights and the curtain. So I completely ditched this side. I, I'm not gonna do like such a wide column going downwards because it was too much, too much dark. I needed to change scenery a little bit more frequently. Um, yeah, so you can start seeing the sh the shadows of the books and this is like the sloping of the shelf and that's the shelves and you can see two lamps in here. So um, it's getting progress, uh, but it will not get progress next month. That's right, because next month, I'm not going to touch this because looking at this, 1400 stitches in a month, come on. It's, it's progress, of course, but I have three full coverages and all those other smaller pieces that I'm interested in that I thought I'm going to alternate between my full coverages. So I'm going to be working on two full coverages each month. We'll see how that works. I'm going to try this out for June. And if I like that scheme, <laughs> then I'll do it again. But basically I'm going to work on the uh, vintage vintage garden. Uh, because that's like a really fun quick one. I don't need to put any effort into getting like lots of progress I'm going to put that one as my lower priority uh, For the full coverage just because it just like naturally moves faster um, And then I'll be alternating between uh, the park and the library uh, Each month, so that's that's the plan. That's the idea. We'll have to execute and test the plan if it's a solid plan um, and what I'm hoping to accomplish by that is to have more stitches, more visible progress in each one of those pieces, rather than alternating between them back and forth and back and forth throughout the month. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that works. Um, a lot of that is just like mental, because <laughs> at the end of the day, um, within the year, they're going to get done either, like not done done, but like I'm going to be working on both of them and having, you know, plenty of good progress on, on both of them. Uh, it's just that the breakdown of the how much progress happens from month to month is going to be a little bit different. Uh, which brings me to my last piece that I have to show you today. Um, and that is the Asande on Le Grand Jot. Jate? Jot? I was, I was watching podcasts and listening to whole sorts of things and how the pronunciation... I, I still don't get it. <laughs> I still don't get it. Um... It is by George Seurat. Uh, it is a uh, impressionistic painting. So here's what it looks like. I think it's a pretty famous one. I love it. Um, this was the progress from last last month, um, and here is what we have today. Isn't she beautiful? Look at that. I hope it all fits into the into the frame. So I'm moving it back and forth a little bit. So I have continued to work on this upper part and now you can finally see the trees. Here, let me just get it closer and so I can describe to you what's going on in the scene. Uh, so I folded it up. Um, actually, I don't need to fold it. I can just do it like this. So those are the trees. This is the <laughs> men stick <laughs> from the 19th century. What are they called? I have no idea. Um, it's not a cane, is it? It's a gentleman stick. Um, he's holding it like this under his armpit, or sideways, so it gets kicked up. Uh, and that's the edge of the umbrella from the lady. But every time I un unroll this and take it out of the queue, the hoop, I just can't stop marveling how good it looks. <laughs> and then I would put it on the couch up against, uh, sorry, I think I have something in my eye. Uh, I would put it up against the couch in the living room like stick, take a couple of steps back and kind of like, oh, that looks good. And then come closer, oh, that looks good. <laughs> um, so this, this is my first full coverage. I started it just a little bit before I started Sanctuary of Knowledge, um, but I've definitely put much more work on this one. So, <laughs> that's not a drum roll. Um, it is charted by Heaven and Earth Designs again. I started this on January the 6th. Um, I've spent seven days stitching on it, so I gave it a really good push at the end of the month. And I did 2603 stitches. Uh, so, so far I have 56 days of work on this. So this is 
56 days of work. Um, and I have 27,616 27, stitches out of 185. So it's a relatively smaller full coverage. It's not a mini, um, but just for reference, the Amy Sturt full coverages, regular charts are 350,000, where this is 180,000. Uh, and that puts me at 14.9%. Yes, I was so close to 15, but I was like, I'm not chasing after the numbers. The numbers are arbitrary. Um, I'm just happy that the stitching was done. Um, and um, so I'm stitching this on the 16 count antique white Ada. Um, so if you remember, just a couple minutes ago, I mentioned the fields of gold. Um, it's the same fabric. So actually I got the fabric for this project. So this is 16 count. Um, and then I had leftover, like smaller leftovers. So I thought I'm going to use that for like smaller piece uh, full coverages. Uh, DMC and that's it. Yeah, let me show this to you again because it's so gorgeous. Right there. So that is it in terms of my whips for the month. I think those 14,000 stitches have distributed excellently among the projects that I have. I'm very, very happy about this. Very, very satisfied. Um, beautiful beautiful progress beautiful projects i'm just in awe <laughs> in awe of what's happening because sometimes you stitch 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 and then you look at previous videos because I, I had to look at the screenshots or i had to look at the video to generate screenshots and it's like oh yeah i did yeah that's nice <laughs> so um that's that's refreshing so now let's talk about some patterns that i got uh this month um I got the Country Life, right? So, where is it? I already started, so I got this one, you already saw it. Um, and the next pattern that I got is actually a collection of patterns uh, of lighthouses. Sorry, I had the piece of paper calculating the size for the fabric. So those are lighthouses. Um, it is called Lighthouses here and there, lighthouses of Scotland, Ireland, England, Canada, Alaska, Hawaii, and other states. So it is a whole bunch of lighthouses. I love lighthouses. <laughs> and um, there was a time when I used to paint lighthouses. Um, and this is kind of like bringing it back, oops, full circle for me because um, I'll be very interested to stitch some of them. So my first one that I'm going to be stitching is uh, Peggy Cove in Nova Scotia. There it is, Peggy Cove. It's a really famous one. Let me show you the back. So on the back, you can see, first of all, which lighthouses, um, and then their location across across the world. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like an interesting one. The charts in here are hand-drawn. I mean, it's a printed book, but it's hand-drawn symbols. So that'll be interesting to decipher decipher that because some of them are a little bit more complicated to, to look at. Uh, but nevertheless, they're pretty small. Um, I think they're only 70 by 90 uh, stitches it each, um, and also they're not full coverages. So I'm hoping that this will be um, an okay experience. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you um, is I got fabric. Oh, actually, no, before the fabric. Um, the world of cross stitching came, but not April. May came. I never received the April issue, so we called them up and we said, "What's going on?" Um, but here's this one. I kind of flipped through it. I didn't find anything super interesting or in my taste uh, from this particular magazine. It's a bit more, um, yeah. With with magazines. Um, Sometimes you have one or two things that you are willing to stitch and sometimes you don't have anything. Um, so on average, like it's, it's nice to have them, um, but not every single one of them is like something that you see and you're like, I have to stitch this, especially with like how long things take and there's so much other stuff. Um, so those are the patterns that I got over the month. Um, so not too many. I think that's pretty okay. Two patterns uh, plus the magazine. I think that's quite reasonable in my opinion. Um, I know that it's more than what I can stitch, but it's nice to have a variety and... Oh, <laughs> I didn't tell you. Oh, I totally forgot about the story about this one. So this one, so I went on to one, one, two, three stitch and I thought Blackbird Designs. Yeah, lots of people talk about Blackbird Designs. I'm just gonna start with Blackbird Designs. 
Um, and then, so I went on Blackbird Designs and then I did sort lowest price to highest price. <laughs> I'm a student. <laughs> so it's okay. So what's the lowest price that I can find that I like? And so I found this one, which was um, eight, $8 American US. I'm not sure how much Canadian that is. I'm here in Canada. Um, so that's, that's how this was chosen. Very pragmatic. No, but I do like it. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should tell you those stories. I, I should, right? Because we're about transparency and honesty here and life is life and we have some interesting things that we let dictate our decisions. Um, not always though, not always. But I, I do try to be mindful of how, how much I'm spending on all this stuff. Um, so, okay, so here's the fabric. I got fabric for the Millennium. So if you've seen this one, probably a couple of months ago, I got this uh, piece by Teresa Wensler. Um, this is the Millennium. Yeah, Millennium. Um, I really like the sky. Um, and there's also areas of one over one here. So let me just get it closer to you. So the faces of the angels and the planets. So faces and their hands, right? So their skin. Um, and the planets are one over one. Um, and the rest is two over two, okay? Let me see if I can show you a little bit of a... No, I, don't, I can't really show you the chart part because it's the charts. But anyhow, so it's a combination of two over two and one over one. So I thought I'm going to pick up an even weave for that. Well, of course you have to. Uh, and I'm going to do 25 count because I know that I can do one over one uh, on 25 count because I'm doing the uh, vintage shop sour garden bookshelf. <laughs> Um, and so I decided to pick up a 25 count and I think he, in here they're calling for Ivory Monaco Monaco Ivory Monaco so I picked up a potato Lugano <laughs> I was so curious I was like potato <laughs> let me have one of those please so here is the fabric it is um, I don't know how to describe this color. How would you describe this color? It's a potato color, but not just the color. It has a potato texture too. So do you see all those little specks? They're actually quite dark. That's the potato, potato effect. Um, and then when I got it in person, I was like, oh, they're much darker than I anticipated them to be. Um, so I have to ask you, should I go for it? Or should I just use this potato fabric for other things? Because it's a beautiful fabric, it's got like just enough texture to kind of like provide visual, um, kind of like disperse disperse the irregularity, but not too much that it's obstructive. But with with this piece, does it make sense? Right? Does does the potato make sense here? So that's just I, I need I need your input, advice, <laughs> opinions. I I don't know. I haven't made up my mind on this one. Uh, so that basically concludes all of my stitching stuff. So let's talk about floss tube a little bit. Um, I do have a list of all the people that I wanted to mention. I've, I've watched way more than that, but those are kind of like some of the highlights that I, I wanted to share with you. Um, some of those are bigger floss tubes, tubers. Uh, some of them are a little bit smaller. Uh, number does not mind. No, we don't mind about the number. It doesn't matter, right? Um, it's the content that we love. And uh, yes, yeah, some stuff is great. So. Let's start with uh, the Needlebug Karen. I've mentioned her uh, with the one thread loop start method. Um, I was watching Carol from the Saltbox Stitcher uh, because I was into kind of like exploring different samplers. And I mean, who is not but her? Uh, who's, <laughs> I mean, like, just look at her background. It's like years of samplers in there. Um, and then she mentioned um, uh, Welcome Stitchery. And I don't remember what she said about them, but I was like, I want to see who they are. So I went on their floss tube and I watched the video and kid you not, they had just shown um, the reindeer from Cottage Samplery. Um, I have the pattern, I just got it last month. And they had a finish of it in the frame and I thought, that looks gorgeous. I need to get mine stitching. So um, kind of like a small anecdote of, you know, you, you watch one thing, they recommend something, and you watch that thing, and you're like, 
find something that you also have and that kind of like reignites the passion to to start that project so i've seen how it looks it looks gorgeous my hands are itching now to start it um then i wanted to mention megan from stories and stitches yes yeah, stories and stitches um why because first of all she has lots of interesting things excellent voice to listen to uh but she's from ontario so hello canada <laughs> welcome welcome to floss tube so that's pretty exciting when when someone is you know fr from the area basically i mean canada is large but <laughs> hey <laughs> it's nice it's nice to see that there's like local <laughs> Well, I guess like country local people. Um, so watch her out. I um, watch her out. Uh, watch her. <laughs> check her out. I was like shortening two different things into one. Uh, check her out. She's got, I believe, two videos at this point. Um, very interesting, kind of like just calm, calm voice. Um, so if you want to watch and listen to something in the background while you're stitching, this is good, good stuff. Um, then I saw something by Simply in Stitches. Um, this was one of those things that was recommended to me uh, on uh, on like the recommended page, and uh, so she hasn't been doing a lot of stitching lately. She's been more into knitting, uh, but she t she goes into this video which um, is called um, I think. I think something like whip, par whip parade for fresh start but basically she pulls out like this massive bin uh with all of the cross stitching stuff that she was just like time out on you i've been anxious and anxiety and overwhelmed with all the cross stitching so she's just like all right in you go um and then she kind of like opens up and sort of like relives those works in progress and being like well, do i want to stitch this or do i want to stitch that and she was talking about this whole entire concept of um having too many big projects and just kind of like feeling the the load and the overwhelmness of just working on them and getting things done and um and that was like super interesting because i kind of i could relate to it i don't have that many works in project but it's it's nice to kind of like see that um when people do have and kind of like um encounter what possibilities there are out right there uh, and so anyhow, she goes into all this bin with like works in progress and you kind of like see her excitement about the different things that she's like, oh, I haven't stitched on this one and that would be an interesting one and like, you know, reliving memories and then she picks up a whole bunch of projects that she's going to be putting into her like little like stitching box. Um, and I think that was a video of about a month ago, but it was recommended to me like relatively recently. Um, so she does have already progress and I think a couple of finishes uh, since that video. Um, so that was super interesting and super kind of like interesting and inspiring to see. So if anyone is interested, um, I'll, live, of uh, I'll leave all the, um, the floss tube names at the bottom. Sorry, I, I think I bit my tongue. <laughs> I'm having um, uh, wisdom teeth. I haven't removed, I only removed once and that was like such a night nightmare experience. Um, so I've been holding off to the other ones, but they're kind of like growing in sort of all sorts of different directions. Um, and sometimes I think my, my cheeks get <laughs> too much information, isn't it? Um, yes, I'm, I'm at the age where I'm thinking about my wisdom teeth, if that gives you any reference. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so I've mentioned covered in floss um, and the joy of stitching small things and kind of like small accomplishments. Also, she tagged me and I was like, oh, thank you so much. Like so many, so many good and kind words. And I was like, oh. <laughs> um, very flattered. And then, of course, I have to mention uh, Yentina. Gentina, Yentina, I'm so sorry. I, I, I promise you, I watch you. <laughs> And I hear your name, but like, it so confuses me when there's like the J's and it's like, is it a J or is it like a, a Y pronunciation of the G? So I'll have to rewatch it again, but I think it's Yantina. Yeah, is it Yantina? Um, she mentioned me and I was like, oh my goodness. Like, I've been watching the Stitch Kateers and kind of like all their full coverages and it's like, oh my gosh, you have so many crazy big projects and it's like, wow. Um, and she is one of those people that okay in the book world we have this 
uh, phrase uh, from cover to cover. That means that you read everything from the cover to the other cover. Um, I don't know what the phrase would be from watching a video from like start to finish with no pausing, no skipping, no nothing, just kind of like the whole entire thing. And she sometimes puts like really long videos and it takes me multiple stitching sessions, but I'm like coming back to it <laughs> and continue. And like, thank God for like YouTube's pause and like history that it remembers where you paused. So it just like um, continues playing from the moment that you, you stopped and you exited. But wow, thank you so much for mentioning me. I was like completely blown by it. Um, yeah, like it's so many good words. <laughs> so um, so anyhow, this is this is it for today. This is it for today. This is it for this month. Um, let me know what was your favorite part because I'm kind of like tweaking it a little bit um, what I'm what I'm adding, what I'm not adding. And um, I think it's pretty, pretty regular at this point. But yeah, I hope you uh, enjoy <laughs> exploring new floss tubers. And if you haven't heard about them or if they're new or if they're just a confirmation for you that I like what you like, <laughs> um, whatever that is. Oh, I hope you have a good day. I am going to drink some water, have some food because I'm <laughs> I have no idea how long it's been um, and go and start some stitching for the next month. So uh, thank you for joining me today and I hope to see you next time. <laughs> Bye everyone.